guys, how's it going? It's Al. Welcome back. We have our first official week one on DraftKings NFL. How are you going to build your DFS lineups? We're going to take an in-depth look at all the quarterbacks on the main slate. 13 games, 26 quarterbacks. We're going to go through as many of them as we possibly think are going to be in play for cash games and tournaments. What are we waiting for? Let's go. He's a legend. Before we get started, I did want to shout out uh, our sponsor on today's video, rotowire.com. If you look down below in the pinned comment, there is a link, rotowire.com slash smizzle. You get an absolutely free 10-day trial to all of their things that they offer on Rotowire. If you're doing your friends and family league draft, if you want to check ADPs, uh, right here on the cover of the NFL page, they have their underdog best ball rookie wide receivers part one. You can look at every article that they have. You can check out numerous sports, great products that they have their uh, projections as well for daily fantasy. So go click on that link, drop me your email uh, and see what the 10 days are like. And if you like it, you get to stay. No skin off your back, no sweat, great product uh, and good friends of mine over at rotowire.com. So go support the people that support our stream. Coming over to DraftKings for week one, guess what? Patrick Mahomes, the highest rated or the highest salaried quarterback for week one and for good reason. He's really good at football and extremely good for fantasy. The question is, can you afford him? Now it's been become more of the meta on DraftKings to pay up at quarterback as opposed to past years, um, where you could find a lot of quarterbacks at the 5K to 5,500 range. So last year it was more en vogue, uh, as well as results-wise, paid off more to pay up for quarterbacks. But a lot of that was tied to quarterbacks that had more rushing potential, right? Uh, the running quarterbacks that run it eight, nine, 12 times a game. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, more of a mobile quarterback, a pocket plus quarterback, somebody who can get things done with his legs, but not really somebody uh, who, as you can see, is going to be run a lot with designed runs. He is more of a guy who can hurt you if you give him space to go. He is a very athletic young guy, but for him to have a tournament winning day, it's going to be with his arm. And Cleveland is a tough defense with a tough defensive front, but we'll see. Uh, this game does have a really high total, one of the higher totals on the day, and I think it is going to be a very popular stack, stacked game uh, with Kansas City favored by six uh, and uh, a total here against Cleveland of 53 and a half. Team totals being one of the better predictors when it comes to quarterback scoring because efficiency, not volume, leads to quarterback scoring. You want touchdowns, and if there's going to be a high-scoring environment, usually that means that uh, a quarterback like Patrick Mahomes is going to get his. Kyler Murray, as I spoke about in the importance of rushing quarterbacks video and the video that I did comparing Josh Allen's third year to Kyler Murray's potential in his third year, Kyler Murray, in my opinion, has a chance to completely break fantasy football in 2021. We'll see if he gets there. It's going to take an increase in his efficiency uh, through the air because Everything that he adds on the ground already gives him a really solid floor. He goes into every game with a, an expectation of about eight fantasy points before he even throws a pass because of everything that he can add uh, with his legs. Now, if he can gain some efficiency, and he's basically been league average in terms of passing efficiency in every single metric, right? He's just right there along the league average. They don't really challenge downfield. But when you replace a 40-year-old Larry Fitzgerald with a very spry, young, electric, Rod Tidwell, a.k.a. Rondell Moore, he's wearing 85. Cut me a break. For those of you who don't know who Rod Tidwell is, you did not complete your summer reading, and I'm going to need you to get back to the library and figure it out. So they're going to be throwing a lot of screen passes and try to find ways to get the ball into Rondell Moore's hands, and he is more electric in space uh, and able to turn those into longer games. Hopefully they challenge downfield a little bit more. Obviously can be stacked with A.J. Green and Nook Hopkins, who's going to be the most popular stack with him, but more weapons and more tools um, at his disposal this year. The game that he is playing here in week one, you say that they're going against Tennessee, total of 51 and a half, Tennessee favored by three in Tennessee. You could go with the other side of this game as well. If I can find it up here. Uh, and go with Ryan Tannehill, 6,500, and book yourself a little bit of a discount from somebody who also has ability with his legs, a lot like Patrick Mahomes in the way that he is a mobile quarterback. He's not a running quarterback. 
He's a mobile quarterback, a pocket plus quarterback who can't hurt you with his legs. I don't know if you've heard this before, but did you know that Ryan Tannehill was a wide receiver in college? Interesting, brand new information that just came off the wire. One of the more efficient quarterbacks in the league the last two seasons, 34 touchdowns in all of their games last year, including the playoff game. Um, and they added Julio Jones. So very easy stacks, considering that the ball is really only going to go to three places through the air. It's going to go to Julio. It's going to go to AJ Brown and it's going to go to the tight end right now, assumedly Ferkser, um, which leads to easy single and double stacks. If you were going to bring it back with, uh, if you wanted to go with Tannehill, Stacking him with a couple of his receivers, whether it's pass catchers, tight end, or Ferkser at 3,200. Fine with either one of those. And then, obvious plenty of options. Rondell Moore is 3,000 in week one. It looks like a, a layup play for value uh, with upside. Somebody who can easily get you. If he gets four catches on screens and gets 40 yards, that's already 80. Uh, that's eight fantasy points on DraftKings. So massive upside if he was to score a touchdown or break a long one off of a screenplay or gets down the seam. So a lot of a lot of plays here attached to those two quarterbacks in that particular game. Josh Allen is Josh Allen, another one of the higher totaled games. Uh, Buffalo favored by seven and at home against Pittsburgh with a total of 50 and a half. Josh Allen did absolutely nothing but score a boatload of fantasy points on a per game basis. The number one QB uh, in last year's game the number one fantasy qb on the season just a monster year from him and while he again he used to be a running quarterback he is still a quarterback who possesses the potential to run but they aspire to run him less as we can see throughout the second half of the season they run him a lot when they get inside the five yard line uh, but they dialed back his rushing attempts so the floor that he brings you on the ground is not what he was bringing last Two years ago in 2019, uh, or the second half of the season when he was a rookie in 2018, or the beginning of the season last year when, like, week one, he ran it 14 times. I'm not really expecting that at all. I'm not expecting double-digit rushing attempts. Probably four to six rushing attempts. Gives him a solid floor, but the massive upside with the amazing core of uh, pass catchers that he has there in Buffalo and his ability to add touchdown upside on the ground as well. On the other side, I mean... This team wants to run the ball, but can they run it effectively and efficiently in a game where they're seven point plus underdogs and on the road against a team with very good defense? There's a good chance that they're going to be playing in a uh, negative game script, which means that they're going to have to throw the ball a lot. And we do have players that, you know, you can stack with him at wide receiver uh, in one of my favorites, Deontay Johnson from our must draft list. Juju Smith-Schuster. We're going to have to monitor Chase Claypool as he left uh, practice with an ankle injury. They said it wasn't super serious. So uh, if he's out, expect more target market share for Johnson and Smith-Schuster. Uh, Najee Harris is the guy that everybody wants to get on board with in season long, but like it could be tough sledding in week one in Buffalo. And uh, I like to play running backs when they're favored, but we'll get to that in the running backs video. Moving down the list, Russ Wilson. Yeah, he's good. We, we know what he can do. Hopefully they let him cook in week one. It's still up in the air who's going to be the starter for Indy in week one. We have seen that Carson Wentz is actually out there in seven-on-seven -seven drills today. Uh, we're recording this on Monday the 23rd. Practicing with the team. Is he good again? Like, we don't know. But, like, at least he's out there. Nobody expected him to be back this soon. It was possible that he was going to miss seven, eight weeks. Uh, and they were going to have to start the absolute minimum salary, Jacob Eason in week one at like 4,100, which could open up a lot if you wanted to go that direction if he was named the starter. Uh, but it does appear that Carson Wentz at 56 is going to be the guy against a team that got into a ton of shootouts last season. This game has a total of 48 and Seattle favored by two and a half. Coming down to Deshaun Watson. If he plays, we don't know. Uh, sure, if he plays, he's fine. But we don't know if he's going to play because of all the off-field issues that he's got. Aaron Rodgers in one of the later games of the day, total of 50 in this one. Green Bay favored by three against New Orleans. Now, Aaron Rodgers is certainly somebody that I've spoken about as having a, a great chance of being a regression candidate. He's not going to throw for as many touchdowns this year as he threw for last year. I'm sure that that's going to piss off some Packers fans somewhere, but like you're not, you're never going to have 
9% of your touchdown of, of your passes, your pass attempts turn into touchdowns, which is what he had last year, 9.1 touchdown percentage. On his career, Aaron Rodgers has thrown 6.2% of his pass attempts for touchdowns. If he regresses to his career norms and throws 6% of his touchdowns of uh 6% of his attempts go for touchdowns, he is going to come back down. However, on a week-to-week -week basis, Aaron Rodgers certainly has multiple touchdown expectation <clears throat> and three, four touchdown upside. And considering who you can pair him with, you know, knowing that the majority of his touchdowns are going to go to one Devontae Adams, uh, he makes for a great premium stack option. Uh, wanted Randall Cobb back on this team. He's only 3,900, should see a lot of snaps. Uh, and somebody else who should regress in terms of his touchdowns was Robert Tunyon, who did not get enough targets per game to warrant the amount of touchdowns that he caught. Also, uh, Aaron Rodgers last season threw like an inordinate amount of touchdown passes from inside the two-yard line, which does not usually persist from one year to the next. So regression alert clearly over the course of the season for Aaron Rodgers, but on a one-week basis, regression is not something that we typically look for. Justin Herbert. Going up against that vaunted Washington football team defense in Washington, this seems like it could be a game where the Chargers are favored by one and a half. And like, kind of feel like Washington could win this game. At 6,700, we know where the volume is going to go with the position players, guys like Austin Eckler, guys like uh, Allen catching the ball. It's a question of whether Cook or Parham is going to be the main tight end in that uh Los Angeles Chargers offense. See, chat, I can learn. I said Los Angeles Chargers, not San Diego Chargers. But Fitzmagic at 5,500 really looks like the stunning value here. Um, everywhere that Fitzmagic has gone, he has elevated the guys around him in that offense. So uh, Antonio Gibson getting an awful lot of love this preseason, myself included. Uh, but it still looks like J.D. McKissick is going to be a thing on third downs at least part of the time while... They should include Gibson more in the passing game, and they said that they would, and they have a little bit throughout the preseason. Uh, third downs have gone to McKissick, and hopefully it's not two-minute drill also that goes 100% to McKissick. Uh, but Terry McLaurin, monitor Curtis Samuel and his uh, injuries throughout camp. We'll see if he's going to be back for week one. Humphreys has been outstanding in practice, somebody that people have noticed. Uh Deami Brown has been a monster as well. If he is the starter over Curtis Samuel in week one, somebody you might want to pair with. And obviously, one of my favorites, Logan Thomas. Uh, great stackability in this game. And again, at 5,500, paying down at QB is still going to be a thing that you're going to want to do in tournaments, even though paying up at QB is gives you a little bit better option versus the field. As everybody's looking to pay down at quarterback, you can be different by paying up, but that doesn't mean that Fitzmagic can't throw for three touchdowns in this game uh, or throw for two and possibly add one with his legs, which we have seen him do. He is a guy who will take off a mobile, uh, not really a mobile quarterback at his age, but maybe a pocket plus quarterback who can add with his legs when necessary. Moving on down the list talked about Tannehill Jalen Hurts going up against Atlanta I think that this game is going to be a little bit ignored because of the total considering that we have Pittsburgh Buffalo at 50 Arizona Tennessee at 51 the Green Bay New Orleans game at 50 I'm just reading off my sheet Cleveland and Kansas City at 53 this game with a total of 48 but because of the rushing upside in this spot Jalen Hurts gives you a chance to win a tournament. And going up against Atlanta, who has not really been good at stopping anything, this game does have sneaky shootout potential with places where the ball can go, uh, a very few amount of places where the ball can go, maybe four possible pass catchers on his side of the ball. And then looking over at the Atlanta side, Matt Ryan has always been that guy when you don't expect him to, to have just one or two monster games a year, four touchdowns against Dallas, 28 points against Minnesota, four touchdowns, 34 points. So while there's a big difference between his floor and his ceiling on a week in week out basis, you know that with this offense and the weapons that are at his disposal, Matt Ryan makes for a solid GPP play, especially with the stackability with somebody like Calvin Ridley, who I expect to have a possibility of ending the season as the wide receiver one on the year. We talked about him in my perfect draft video. Uh, the addition of the rookie tight end, Kyle Pitts, who could step into the Julio Jones role 
I don't think he's going to fully step into the Julio Jones role. I respect the uh, the talent. I respect the athleticism. 4,400 also makes for a solid price there. Uh, and the the comeback and bring back players that you can go with as well. Russ Gage at 5,300 is a little rich for my blood. Maybe I'm just being locked into my own priors uh, with that one. But Hertz and Ryan also both good plays in week one for tournaments. Kirk Cousins against Cincinnati. I think this is going to be the most one of the most popular uh, game stacks or stack and bring backs that is going to exist in week one uh, in terms of percentage and percentage played. 10 a.m. game. Joe Burrow is going to be on everybody's list because of the price, how many times we expect him to throw the ball. We know that there's really only three pass catchers on that team, and they are all cheaply priced between Chase. Well, Chase hasn't really caught balls in the preseason, but we assume that he's going to start catching balls when the regular season gets here. T. Higgins has been a monster and is only 4,700. You can bring him back with Jefferson or Thielen. The most, uh, we'll talk about Dalvin Cook on the running backs video, but I expect him to be one of the highest played running backs uh, on the week one slate, both in cash and in tournaments because of the game against Cincinnati. They are favored. It is a high total game, all those sorts of things. Um, Kirk Cousins, more of a statue type guy, not going to add anything with his legs. If you think that he can tear up Cincinnati through the air, great. Uh, but again, 600 more than Joe Burrow in this spot. Burrow is going to be an extremely popular play and the stacks with him popular and the bring back players on top of that as well. Now we're getting into the position where these are your kind of hope players. We got Trevor Lawrence. I think that this Jacksonville offense is going to be a lot better than it was in previous years, but it is still the Jacksonville Jaguars offense, but they get to play the Houston Texans defense and Houston, Texas, the Houston Texans are just an absolute tire fire right now. Uh, offensively, defensively, on the field, off the field, trying to bar reporters from practices. It's like they're just a hot mess. Signing a bunch of special teamers to be their skill position players throughout the season. Like it's just, it's all bad. Okay. So we're going to be targeting Houston a lot with game stacks and team stacks, considering that we can always bring it back with somebody who projects to get a lot of volume in games that they're going to lose in Brandon Cooks or any of the other pass catchers that might be on this team. There's just nowhere else to throw the ball. And while they're not going to be good and they're not going to be efficient, if they have to throw it 35 plus times a game and Brandon Cooks gets 25% of those targets and typically his targets are easily convertible into catches. He runs a lot of short routes, drags and slants and everything else while he still has the ability to get downfield. Um, Stacks with a Cooks bring back are going to be pretty much all the rage every week in daily fantasy. Um, not sure I want to play the quarterbacks in that game. You know, for if, if it's going to be Tyrod Taylor at 5,300, I think there's better routes to go at that cheap end. Uh, but Trevor Lawrence is somebody who I kind of highlighted in the to, to get different in terms of tournaments in the first look that we did this uh, this month. Is Jimmy Garoppolo going to be the starter week one? Probably. He's facing Detroit. Uh, I don't know. He's going to have to be real darn efficient, right? I'm not expecting 30 tosses in this game for Jimmy Garoppolo. So for him to be a guy who can win a tournament for you in week one, he's going to have to throw like four touchdown passes on 20 attempts. And while that's possible... I'm not considering that it's going to be extremely highly probable. And they have three really valuable wide receivers, or sorry, really valuable pass catchers uh, from Kittle. I'm having problems highlighting players and teams yet. I'm still in preseason form, I suppose. From somebody like George Kittle, who's 6,300, and you're going to have to pay up to go get it tight end. Uh, to Debo Samuel at 5,900, who's getting kind of slighted, in my opinion, because of the rise in popularity of Brandon Ayuk, who is also a really good pass catcher and a really good player in his own right, uh, and may be the alpha on this 49ers team. But if they only throw it 20 times a game, this is probably going to be a team that we're going to want to focus uh, on the running backs, depending on who you think is going to be the lead running back in week one for that team. And then there's Jared. Bleh. I'm sorry. Let me. Jared. Bleh. I can't do it. I'm not talking about that. We're not stacking Detroit. Watch Detroit be the team that wins for you in week one. Anyway, that's my look at basically the entire slate of quarterbacks for week one. I hope that you guys like the video. Drop a like on it. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a reply down below. Look out for another video right there.
is a legend.